Welcome to Romero Records Podcast. Today we have on... Amanda Kirkman. How's it going, Amanda? It's good. Good. Uh, so you are a pretty diverse diverse person. You've got your, your BJJ going on. You've got some real estate going on. Um, how, how does that come about? Uh, you just... Did you start one and then the other, or did you, like, find them both at the same time? How'd that come about? Yeah, I actually found them both at the same time. Really? Mm-hmm. All right. I, uh, well, I guess BJJ maybe first. Yeah. And at the the time I got into BJJ, I was doing a real estate class. So... I'm sorry. For people who are who don't know what BJJ is, <laughs> Brazilian jiu-jitsu, by yes, the way. Yes, Brazilian so. jiu-jitsu, yeah. So I started uh, jiu-jitsu and then started taking a real estate class. And just snowballed from there. Nice. Mm-hmm. So when you started the jujitsu, um, did you do sports in like high school or something, or you just decided to up and do it one day? Let's see. I did ballet. I was in ballet, ballet lyrical. Yeah, I was a big dancer. Did that help you with jujitsu? Yes. Okay. So how did that help you? So jujitsu has got a it's it's a sport made for smaller opponents against bigger opponents. Mm. So the flexibility. And dance background's been really beneficial. Oh, uh, that makes sense. I mean, with with like jujitsu, do you? I guess you just being a woman, like, do you oh. end up like going against men all the time? Mm. Yeah, I say it's for smaller people, but there's a lot of big dudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, I'm going against. I mean, I'm going against guys your size. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's crazy as a woman. I think, especially in the sport, mm. um, it's. There are not a lot of women that do it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's intimidating. It's intimidating to try. It's intimidating <laughs> being a woman in the sport? Yeah. Why oh, you say that? Just because we're going against guys. If they You're were, like actually competing yeah, against we're guys? We're not competing against oh. guys. But we're, like, going, oh my God. we're going live every day in class. Yeah, yeah. So like live rolling means we're doing full contact rolls. Mm. So a guy your size is trying to choke me or break my arm. Yeah. So it's intimidating in that respect. Oh, okay. Like when I actually compete, it's against women, but I go against so few women that I don't get that opportunity often. Mm. I'm mostly going against men. Oh, okay. Well, that should help you, you know, against (laughs) the No, it does. It does. It does. That's pretty wild. So like, did you know that when you first started? No. So I was dating this guy and he was doing it and Mm. I would sit and watch and I think one day I was like, I think I want to try that. Mm. So when I first started out, I was the only girl at our gym. And throughout the years, I've been doing it for six years. Um, more and more women have, have come. But in the beginning, it was just me. Yeah. So, like, when you first started out and, you know, you're, you're learning all this stuff, was it, like, overwhelming? Or were you just like, oh, this, is, this makes sense? It was it was one of those primal things. Mm. It's like wrestling. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just this like instincts just in, kicked in. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, when you say instincts kicks in, but like not that many people <laughs> really have that in them. So I'm assuming you know you you start I guess like looking up people like YouTubing or just like sticking or hanging around after like practice or something just to learn a little bit more like how how did you get better okay so i think there's two types of people that take to the sport so there's the people that are just instinctual mm. and they just there's they just move okay. and then there's the people that kind of intellectualize it and want to study and learn okay and what happens is if you're an instinctual person eventually you you reach the intellectual part yeah so you know your instincts are great it's great to be aggressive, but then you need this intellectual jujitsu knowledge. Mm. So I started off just like a Ferrari (laughs) engine, just going, going, going. And now I've kind of gotten into like jujitsu theory, which sounds crazy, but um, it's, it's a, it's a cult. It's a a whole other thing. So what is it? It, It's, uh, it's really hard to explain because if you're not into it, you don't understand, (laughs) but it's uh, different sizes um, there's different games. So like your game is going to be different cause you're bigger. Yeah. You have like thick legs and you know, you, I'm, I'm long and flexible. And so the things that I do are going to be completely different and just how those two games match up is really interesting. Oh, okay. So like when you, when you develop a certain style, do you just kind of like, you know, this is my thing. This is how I attack a match. Or do you just try to like develop it over time and evolve? Are you switching? Yeah, you develop it over time. Okay. So somebody will show something, 
and you'll be like, oh, you know what? That actually works for me. Mm. But as a woman, I get told like over and over like, oh, you just do this. And I'm not as big as you. I'm not as strong as you. So it's really frustrating because I can't just, you know, I can't just do the move. Yeah. I don't have the upper body strength to do it. So then I have to take it and make it my own. Okay. So how old were you when you started? So I was 30. I'm 36 now. Okay. So you've been doing about six years. Mm -hmm. Um, So at 30, Mm -hmm. who are you competing against? I mean, you just start off with like people that are around your age and that have been competing since they were 18 or you? So yeah, at 30, I didn't, I didn't compete until, so there's belts, there's five belts. Um, white is the first one and blue is the second. So I didn't compete until blue belt. Okay. Just lack of confidence and yeah, lack of confidence. Do they tell you not to compete until that time frame? Like you have to be ready to compete? Mm, you can compete at white. It's really, it's like a street fight more. No. <laughs> yeah. It's just like two people that don't know what they're doing. Yeah, I bet so. That's <laughs> I've wild. seen fingers get broken oh, and snap. like, yeah, at white belt. Dang, mm-hmm. I, I remember I was listening to um, I was listening to a Joe Rogan podcast. Um, the Undertaker was on there, and he was talking about how during um, I think it was like a WWE match that he had a guy was uh, he was a huge dude, which Undertaker is already big, but he was talking about this guy was huge and he had his arm out trying to clothesline the Undertaker, but um, the guy was just tired and lazy. And so he ended up, like, getting his fist in his face, and it, like, broke his orbital bone, like, 90% of his orbital bone in his face. And it's like, that's what happens when people who don't know what they're doing are doing a, a very physical sport like that. So that's pretty wild. Like, I I can imagine, like, being a super experienced person, having to go against somebody who's unexperienced and, like, getting injured because they didn't know what they were doing. That would be wild. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's, it's like white belt boys – it's uh, <laughs> it's probably the scariest thing ever. Yeah. Because they don't know what they're doing, and I'm a woman, yeah. and I have color on my belt. Mm. So instantly, it's like it's like a real life rape situation mm. where, like that that's what's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. If I'm ever you know attacked on the street, it's gonna be by somebody that doesn't know what they're doing. Yeah. It's super aggressive. So it's got a lot of you know real world applications, mm. which I like. And then there's this uh, sports jiu-jitsu competitive side, too, which okay. I gravitate towards more. Oh, okay. So, I mean, do you think about, like, I guess the real-world uh, application to to jiu-jitsu, or do you think about more of it as, like, a sport? Like, a, this is a thing that I do. More of a sport, but since I sell houses, I have been in situations, actually. You know, I'm in vacant houses with yeah. people I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And it's Memphis. True. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, it's, you know, I've, I feel confident knowing that if somebody grabs me, I know how to get out of it. Yeah. I know what it's like to be choked. Yeah. I know like what my points are on being choked, like where my limit is. Mm. So. So when you're, when you're doing a competition, um, how much of it is like, um, I guess preparation factored in, like, are you doing this like months out? Are you doing this like a few weeks out? How long is it? No, it's it's a uh, it's months. I it's mean, months. it's months. It's cutting weight. It's playing for points instead of submissions. It's psychologically getting ready, mm-hmm. having like adrenaline dumps. I actually hate competing. <laughs> yeah. All right, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of good at it, but I hate it. I think you're pretty good at it. I've seen you hold some hardware, <laughs> so you've ha- you've got to know what you're doing at least, and your brown belt, so mm-hmm. you you know something. <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you. But yeah, no, it's I don't like it. Um, I think it's important and necessary, but yeah, I have like just my adrenaline will just dump in the middle of the day for no reason. I yeah. obsessively like run through what's going to happen. Mm. But that's like the mark of somebody who like is good though. Like they say successful people envision themselves being successful. Like you have to like play it through your head. Mm -hmm. Like I remember when I was in high school and I played uh, football, I would just like envision myself making plays in my head before the game even started is because like I had to envision that success before I even had it. So I would assume you like are going through your head. Well, do you know who you're even going against Mm -hmm. like way before or sort of? So you get, you know, you get your brackets, mm-hmm. but you don't know who's in your bracket. So, you know, it could be one of three people, one of four people. So you can kind of stalk them and watch their footage Yeah. if you're that kind of person. So just one in four. 
Mm-hmm. That's pretty crappy odds of trying to find out who you're going against. <laughs> so do, do you just prepare for all of them or do you just like... – Yeah, if I, I – I mean I stalk them yeah. just to see what they're doing. Mm. Yeah, and so I kind of have like a little Rolodex. So I have like game plan A for this person and B for this person. Oh. So how, how long does that take? What, the matches? No, or... to, to like game plan against <laughs> multiple different people. I'd say – I mean it's – it's a good six weeks. I need a good six weeks to prepare. Really? Mm-hmm. What's the, I guess, what's the shortest time frame that you've had? 30 days. 30 days. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. <laughs> well, so with, so you've got 30 days to compare to compete. When you are going through, like, I guess, your, your meals and, and all that, uh, I guess, like your training, what do you prioritize the most? Like, is it, uh, you know, people talk about if you, you got to get good sleep, you got to, you got to constantly train, you got to constantly rest, you got to eat right. Like what's something that you're like, all right, I have to do this first. And then I got to do this. Like I've, I've got to watch tape, but you know, what, how would you prioritize the things? Okay. My first thing is training. I want to get as much training in as possible. And I want to, build confidence. So whatever I'm envisioning, I need to go perform that actively Mm. multiple times. The week before I try to take off training to recover. I do a lot of strength and conditioning as Mm. well. Um, So I take that week off. I'm always worried about getting hurt. It's a big fear, right before competition. Yeah. So you have to balance aggressively training with don't get hurt. Mm. So I I kind of pick and choose. No white belts. (laughs) <laughs> no white belts. No white belts Refuse when I'm getting the ready. White belts. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think that's it. Oh. Okay. I think uh, weight just comes from overtraining, oh. the weight loss. So how how does your? I mean, women women don't usually fluctuate in weight as much as men do. As much as men do. <laughs> Are you sure. <laughs> uh, I, th- I think men fluctuate in weight more. See, I think water weight's a big thing. So it's easier to cut. It's just water weight. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So how do you how do you cut? Do you do sauna or steam room or something like that? So it depends. Like um, it, we did nationals in December, and I did gi. So my gi weight, gi is the little robe that you wear. Yeah. My gi weight is is one fifty four. Okay. And then the next day is no gi, and I have to. I'm sorry, it was one fifty two. Um, the next day is no gi, and I have to be down to one forty seven. So that's a lot of weight to cut in 24 hours. Yeah. So for that, I did sauna, salt, hot tub. I when you say salt, what are you doing? Like salt bath. A salt bath? Mm-hmm. I've never heard that. <laughs> yeah, Epsom salt, like Epsom salt bath, just to dehydrate yourself. Really? Yeah, so right before I walk on the mats, I mean, we're taking little sips. And you have to weigh in uh, 15 to 30 minutes before your match. So mm. you don't get to, like, weigh in in the morning and then hydrate. Yeah. So you're going... You're going pretty dehydrated onto the mat. Jesus. I mean, that's got to be super stressful. <laughs> it's really stressful. <laughs> <laughs> that's got to be probably the most stressful part. Like, <clears throat> you know, obviously besides the actual match itself, but not. So what happens when you don't make weight? You get disqualified. So they just don't even do it? Yeah. You're like, even if you're like, if you're any, if you're over at all. You're instantly disqualified. <laughs> yeah, no, it's intense. <laughs> well, what about does the person you're going against have a have a choice? No, they just say, they, yeah, you're just disqualified. That's crazy. Because mm-hmm. I think in UFC you have a choice. Like the person can say, yeah, I'll still do it, but like they deduct points. Like mm-hmm. I think they deduct deduct like a, a point or two or something hmm. like that. I don't don't take my word, <laughs> but I think that's how UFC does. I can't remember, but that's crazy. They just yeah, it's it's really intense. I started, I did one, so I was at Purple in October. Mm. I was a Purple Belt, and I was like, I'm gonna do one competition to see where I'm at, mm. and so I won. And then instantly, like on my adrenaline high post competition, I was like, I'm gonna sign up for more. Yeah. So I signed up for nationals, and then I won gold and gi and no gi, and then I was like, you know wow. what? I'll do worlds. And so signed up for Worlds like two weeks later and then got gold. But I was crying. I was crying like every other day in training. I just like (laughs) break down crying and people are like, are you okay? No, I'm not okay. I won gold. (laughs) And everybody was like, you're going to win. It's like, you don't know me. You don't know what happens on that mat. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I step out there and I want to take a nap. Yeah. Like my adrenaline dumps and it's almost impossible to move my body. Dang. 
So are, are you a more like hyped person? Like, do you like to amp yourself up? Or are you just like calm? Like, let me just think. Let me play through this whole thing. Like, how do you, how is your brain working? Okay, so literally, like, I'm having this conversation in my head, and it's like, you have to step out on that mat. Mm. And the other part of me is like, no. And so you don't I'm have to not, do this. I'm you, not, I, you can just go home. Exactly. <laughs> Amanda, you're 36. Like, this is <laughs> what are crazy. you doing? <laughs> That's wild. Yeah, so that's the conversation I'm having. And then the the ref will be like, come on the mat. And I'm literally having that conversation. Like, one foot, it's got to move. Okay, the other foot has to move. That's crazy. And the second we, like, bump hands, Mm -hmm. I just react. And it's that instinctual movement. And I want to, like, murder. Yeah. That's wild. Mm -hmm. I mean, for for somebody to accomplish what you've accomplished and to still have that mindset that's that's mind-blowing like (laughs) and i'm sure it helps other people like if anybody's listening who is like i don't know does any kind of sport or anything that's like done in front of people so that's another thing like how many people are there oh my god that's actually the worst (laughs) yeah no that's the worst part is there's people I mean, there's it's a auditorium or yeah. you know wherever gymnasium they gymnasium wherever they rent. So you've got a mat, and how, you know how big the dimensions of the mat are. Ooh, oh my are they God. like string together? It's like a bunch of yeah. Mats. It's like uh, like four to six mats per side, mm. maybe twelve mats total. So there's little like barricades, and people are just hanging over, screaming. Oh, so they're like on the floor. Like... Yeah, they're screaming at you. Oh, so like wow. that's what's intimidating is you're fighting somebody that wants to break your arm or yeah. choke you out, and then. Their teammates and your People teammates are, them all. <laughs> are screaming, and you're just—it's intense. Yeah, it's—it's it's a crazy experience. So, where was what was the first competition you said before nationals? Um, I did just an IBJJF Open in Foley, Alabama. Okay, Foley. just for COVID, they're only doing like red states. Yeah, because they're the only states that will allow. This competitions. was during COVID. Yeah. Oh wow! So, what month was this? October. October. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you go to Foley and. You're competing in this competition. How many people are there? Um, maybe, maybe there's like maybe thirty people watching my match. Okay. Yeah. So not that many. And how many people do you do you already know ahead? How many people you need to compete against to win? Yeah. So I'm in the old lady division. So oh, I'm nice. lucky if there's like <laughs> I'm 36. I'm lucky if there's there's five women. You five? Know. Yeah. Like in the in the adult. That's crazy. Men's category, there's like 36 dudes, but there's not a lot of women in the sport. So, wow. Mm-hmm. I would, I would really think there would be a lot more than that. Mm. That's it, crazy. Well, the high, the more color you have on your belt, the less people. Hmm. And then if you're a woman, there's even less people. Yeah. Like I said, it's just it's there's very few women. That's wild. So, is it the the higher rank you are, the, you know, those people are usually older and they're like teaching. They're not really competing. Well, the there's less higher ranked people because oh, the yeah. nature of the sport is everybody starts off and then for people to make it to blue, it's hard. Oh, okay. And more people fall off. Yeah. And then people to make it to purple, it's even harder. Hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th- how long did it take you? So you're at Brown now and mm-hmm. you started at 30. So it took mm-hmm. you six years to get there. What was the gap between each one? So I was in my white belt for two years, my blue belt for three, and my purple for two. Oh, okay. So I'm in my seventh year. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Man. But, so Foley was interesting because I tore my ACL Mm. and both my meniscus um, a year and a half before. (laughs) Yeah. In jiu-jitsu. How'd that happen? Oh. (laughs) A... uh, a white Two? belt. <laughs> no, no, this is a purple belt. <clears throat> Gotta love him. Um, he was 230 pounds. Oof. And that's he, me. yeah, and he did a judo throw mm-hmm. where he basically like football tackled my leg. So I, Ouch. my whole entire knee, like it came apart and then it went back together. <sighs> and I tore my ACL, my MCL, and both my meniscus. I had patella. This is all in one leg? Mm hmm. Yeah, I thought I died. It was disgusting. I was screaming. Um, it's jujitsu, so a bunch of dudes ran over, and they're like, oh, you're fine. You're fine. 
Yeah. No. And they're like, oh, it's fine. No. And I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to throw up. And I was, I wanted an ambulance. And they're like, oh, no, no, you're good. You're good. So they put me on a chair and carried me to the car. <laughs> <laughs> And then my put an ice pack on my fiance. Yeah, I was like, "Are we going to the doctor?" He's like, "No, you've never been injured before. You don't know. Like, (laughs) (laughs) you're fine." Yeah, that's crazy. (laughs) So uh, we didn't go to the doctor for five weeks. Oh my god! So you just walking on it? Like you were putting your no? No, no we like borrowed crutches from somebody. Everybody thought I was being really dramatic because I have a tendency to be dramatic. (laughs) A two hundred and thirty pound dude falls on you, and you're being dramatic. That's crazy. So I had surgery, and that was my first competition post surgery. Post surgery. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have how how long did that um, therapy take take place? It was. It was supposed to be a year of no jiu-jitsu, but I came back like six months post-op. All right. But, it, I mean, it was it was insane. I couldn't – I was non-weight-bearing for six weeks, mm-hmm. so my whole leg atrophied. Oh. And I had to, like, relearn how to walk, which was crazy. Dang. hmm So when you're relearning how to walk, is this like um – were those like the like the bars that you know you people hold on to like you're just using those bars and kind of slowly putting the weight on there and whatnot? Yeah, no, he, yeah, he was like, okay, you can walk, and my leg had atrophied so much, like it couldn't support me. Mm. So yeah, it was physical therapy with. This is like a gate. This is how you're supposed to walk. Mm. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. So, with your leg, is it like a bending motion that hurts? I mean, that was, like, hurting you, or was it just, like, constantly just in pain? Just, like, by doing nothing, it was just in pain. What, before or after surgery? Before the surgery. Uh, Before the surgery, it was was throbbing. So just by doing nothing, it was just in pain. Yeah, it was just throbbing. I was taking, like, 800 milligrams of ibuprofen going, I think something's wrong with it. And everybody's like, you're fine. I would have thought if, like, by doing nothing, it hurts, I would think something's wrong Mm, with it. Because, like, after I work out super hard, I'm really sore. Like, so if I do arms and I just do way too many reps, then doing this all day, I'm good. But as soon as I, like, let my arm drop, (laughs) that's when it hurts a lot. So I don't think I'm injured. I'm just sore. I would think I'm injured if I'm just always hurting. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I knew I was injured. And they were, like, all telling me it was in my head. That was crazy. Maybe it's in my head. Yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> it was so crazy. Uh, I couldn't lock my leg because my At meniscus all? had folded over. Like, I couldn't, if I had my uh, leg straight out in front of me, I couldn't lift my heel off the ground because my meniscus had gotten stuck oh my in God. my joint so it wasn't allowing it to like act like a leg yeah uh and that was the only thing kind of making my knee stable Hmm. so that's crazy so you go through the therapy and you decide let me get back into um competing and practicing and all that kind of stuff what's going through your head like don't get hurt don't get hurt Mm -hmm. don't get hurt Mm mm-hmm that's yeah. the worst. <laughs> I had I had insurance, but it was still eight thousand dollars. Yeah, and it was a year essentially out of my life. Um, yeah, and people would touch me, and I would. I mean, it was like PTSD. Oh, man. So it was a lot of building confidence that I was going to be okay. Was it just your leg, or was it like if somebody you know was about to put like a Darce choke on you, or like put you in an arm bar or something like anything? Just like kind of triggered you. Mm. Yeah, I, I think I have a better awareness now yeah. that you're, you know, I can get hurt. Yeah. Because before I was just going, I, I didn't care. Like, I, I was a dude. Like, we were scrapping. Yeah. And now it's, yeah, I can get hurt. True. <laughs> so do you think it, do you think it affects your, your ceiling, like your potential, like mm. thinking in the back of your head? Yes. Yeah. I mean, it does. I, I've had to alter how I train. Mm-hmm. I can't do the things I used to do. So I've had to like completely change my game. Um, I don't have like complete mobility. I can't take my heel and put it to my butt. Mm-hmm. I used to do triangles. I don't know if you know what yeah. those are. I can't do those anymore. 
So I had to change everything. That's crazy. So that just eliminates, you know, part of your game. Mm -hmm. So did did you try to think of something else that you can do? Like Mm -hmm. you try to, you know, either create new moves or like do something else, uh, like to substitute. And that's kind of the intellectual like part that I, I was forced to reckon with. Dang. So did you, do you ever forget that, that, that it happened to you? Like you try to, so you say you can't do triangles. Do you ever like try to do a triangle? And you're like, ah. yeah, <laughs> yeah, actually today <laughs> we were doing a move and it popped and I had oh, that snap. like, let me walk around real quick and make sure I'm okay. Oh, so I stood up man. and walked around and my boyfriend was like, are you okay? I was like, I think I'm, I think I'm okay. I don't know. <laughs> but I think it's okay. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Does it feel completely fine or does it like you can tell? Mm, I, you, you can tell. Uh, you can tell some things because they took the patella tendon. Yeah. So they took the middle part of my patella tendon to make an ACL. Oh. Yeah. So I've got two screws. One of the screws is coming out. <laughs> yeah. Do, are they going to like, do they screw it back in? They like, take it out. It, you don't even need it. It's my body's oh, like rejecting okay. it. Yeah. Oh, so that's a good thing, right? Mm. No? <laughs> no, I mean, it's not. <laughs> it would be better if it just stayed. I would, I would I'm, proud, I'm proud of my body. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I figured you'd be like, your body's like, I don't need this anymore. That's, yeah. why, I'm, that's why I'm rejecting mm-hmm. it is because I'm healing. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, they'll just they'll just cut it open and take it out. Dang. That's another, what, eight, five grand? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so are you going to, like, do you wear a brace on it all the time? No. No, nothing. Yeah, no. Are you allowed to? Can you wear like a knee sleeve or something? Or you can. Yeah. They're they're cumbersome. Uh, they're really hard to train with. Yeah. Do you want to train? No. <laughs> Are <good>. you sure? <laughs> <laughs> See, I I was doing. Uh, wh- where do you train at? Uh, I train at Midtown Grappling Academy. Midtown. But Grappling. there's Memphis Judo is the other big one. So I was doing boxing there, mm-hmm. and I just stopped just because of the time frame. Like with my job. I would get off work sometimes way too late to even go there. So I just like had to stop going. Cause I'm like, I'd never get to come here. And in December, I didn't get to go at all. And then I started in like September and then, but I was going a good bit then. And then my schedule started getting crazy. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to just go to a regular gym. Like I enjoyed it a hundred percent. The coaches were great. Um, but it, it was just the, t- the time frame. And, um, do you know Marcus Williams? <laughs> Wait, yeah. Yes. Black dude. Yeah. He always has like a mohawk haircut. Yeah. yeah. So I work with him at Owens Corning. Okay. And he's the one that told me about Memphis Jiu Jitsu. Mm-hmm. And um I was Rachel was actually thinking about doing uh the Jiu Jitsu there. Oh my god. But she just didn't. And I was like, Wow, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> she will though. She will now. Conv- convince no, her to I will. do it. Convince I will. her to do that's it. That's like my that's my specialty. Because she was talking about like the application of just Self defense, mm-hmm. and I was telling her like boxing is great just because it gets. I get so tired doing boxing. Like I'm, I'm so used to like doing bodybuilding workouts. There was a time frame where I was doing a lot of CrossFit, but I mean even from high school I was doing more like bodybuilding type stuff or like Olympic lifts, and then I went through a phase of where I did CrossFit for probably like two or three years, and then I was like I ah, like bodybuilding type stuff more, but um, that that boxing. Dude, it, it tired me out so it's fast. Cardio. But um Were yeah. you hitting people or just bags? Just bags. Yeah. Uh so the cl- so the boxing that they have there, it's it's not like a you know when people think about like a kickboxing class where it's mm-hmm. just, you know, they're just having fun and playing loud music. It's it's they're really teaching you boxing there. Like mm-hmm. your footwork, striking, everything. That's bots, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh so the teacher Dang, I don't remember He's, any of the people's names except I think Jade. He's a light skinned black dude, bald head. Then there's a God, I think there's a shorter Asian chick, and then there's a younger white guy. But um I, I don't remember either one of their names. But um Jade, he he actually competes or used to. Uh I remember he he was telling a story about going to like Vegas and I think I don't know if he was coaching somebody or he actually competed. And then, um, gosh, there, there was probably like six guys I saw all the time, like actually in the ring, um, like, you know, sparring with each other, but the class is mainly, you're just hitting a bag. Mm -hmm. So, 
It's still really hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really, really so hard. the first day, so what we do is that you start out for like five, ten minutes, you're just jumping rope. That's literally the first thing you do. And then they do like body weight exercises. So you're just doing these body weight exercises, which suck. Like it was terrible. And then after that, you do that for like, the whole class is an hour, so you do that for like 20 minutes or so. And then you take like a five-minute break and that five minute break is to wrap up. <laughs> so to get your wraps on, you put your gloves on and then, um, they just like start throwing out combos. They, you know, for the people who have never been, that's what makes the class kind of weird. Cause like there's people who've been there for probably like years and then there's people who it's their first day. So I was like one of those first day people. So they're like teaching me, you know, what is a one, what is a three, what is a five, you know, stuff like that. So they're just teaching the strikes and, um, I probably get like halfway through this 30 minutes of hitting the bag and I'm like, I need to take a break. Like I, I just looked at the, the instructor at the time. I was like, I'm tired. Like you're, I, you're the only one. Yeah. I'm the only one. And I'm like, you know, probably the third biggest person in there. And I, you know, I'm in, I look like I'm in shape, but I mean, there's people who look like they're not as good a shape as I am. And they're just like sleeping through this. Like they're just going straight through it. And I'm, I'm like dying. But the weird thing was, is I wasn't like huff and puff tired. I was just like, like, you know, the feeling when you're about to get choked out. <laughs> I felt like that. Like, like I wasn't drowsy. Huff- yeah. I was yeah. just drowsy and drained. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Like I just felt like this. I was like, Hey, I didn't, I need to take a break. But I wasn't like huff and puff tired. I was just felt like I was literally about to pass out. Like I was going to go to sleep. And it happened to me the first and second day I was there. And then I think the second day I was there, um, this chick just comes up to me and she was like, are you breathing? And I was like, yeah, am I? <laughs> and she was like, yeah, that happened to me when I first started working out here. I, I would like almost pass out. And then I realized I wasn't breathing when I was punching. And I started doing that. Never had the problem ever since. You're holding your breath. I don't even know if I was holding my breath. It was just, I mean, I guess I must have been, but I, I just wasn't like really focused on my actual breathing while I'm, while I'm hitting it. And I guess I was just like passing myself out, you know, like I was just suffocating my, my body of the oxygen that I needed, which is pretty wild. Like, <laughs> I didn't, that's one thing. I, well, like I used to be a personal trainer and I would train people and like breathe. Like I would see people, you know, you see a guy do bench and they like hold their breath the whole time or they squat and they, I'm like, yo, breathe. Like your body needs the oxygen, just breathe. Mm -hmm. So it was ironic that that's exactly (laughs) what I wasn't doing. So, I mean, do you, do you have that issue in in jujitsu? Is that Mm -hmm. like, um, people don't breathe or something during doing something? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's that wrestling cardio. So it's really hard. It's, it's really hard to replicate. Yeah. So like when you first get in it, you know, it's you're you're moving. People, you're panicking. People are on top of you. You can't breathe. Yeah. Um, and kind of controlling that and learning how to use less exertion and mm. more technique. Yeah, yeah. Is the key. Because now I can dance around people. Yeah. Not not all people. <laughs> it's just I know some people are like she can't dance around me. Yeah. But yeah, like lower belts. I'm really not working out very hard. Mm. And they are. Yeah. Like the guys, like the brand new guys will be like shaking and spits like flying out of their mouth. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I've got them in like a mounted triangle. <laughs> They're turning purple. You're just slapping them in the face. I'm like, hey, just, just tap. Like all I got to do is tap. <laughs> That's crazy. So when when you go against somebody like that, are are you trying to like – I guess throw like do y'all throw people in the fire like when you're training or is like st- step by step you know? Uh, I, <laughs> I'd say no. I'd say just go throw in, throw in the fire. Throw them in the fire. Yeah. Is is better to learn the lesson early on? Yeah. Mm. Well, it depends. I mean, some people aren't aggressive by nature, so yeah, they yeah. go in there and you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mount. Some girl that doesn't really want to be mounted and put her in a triangle. Choke if she's her out uncomfortable. First day. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, you're doing great. 
but a yeah, lot. Yeah, just tap. You're doing great, but <laughs> You're tap. You're doing great, tap yeah. Right now. That's crazy. This one girl, uh, instead of tapping, she kept going, ow. And I was like, are you okay? Like, just all you have to do is tap. So that's also a oh, thing. Oh, snap. Because people don't under, you know, you have to be really careful with a brand new person. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, some people don't know you tap and, and the, they won't say anything. Yeah. They're just thinking, ow, yeah. is enough or, for you. Yeah, to... ow. <laughs> <laughs> like, you have to tap. So yeah. that's kind of the first thing we teach. But a lot of the dudes especially, they just go in there and we just yeah. throw them in and that's how you learn. Do you do you get a lot of the, the guys? Like I know you say you work against a lot of guys all the time, but like do you get those brand new guys and you like, you know, work with them a lot? I try. Now, since I hurt my knee, I try to stay away from the brand new guys mm. just because the risk isn't worth yeah. the reward. I'm not getting much. Yeah. And I could get – potentially like really hurt absolutely yeah but um yeah i mean for anybody who wanted to try it, it's a super open helpful community lots of great people <laughs> ready to choke you out, ready to choke you out. <laughs> that's funny so with your real estate stuff mm-hmm. you you were telling me about everything that you were doing earlier is that <laughs> Is that often? Um, yeah, real estate's crazy. It's a, it's as crazy as jujitsu. Just in a, just in a different Do light. tell. It's large sums of money. It's one of the most stressful things a person will do, and just navigating personalities. Um, unique situations, like I told you before. You got to read the room. <laughs> got to read the room. <laughs> That's yeah, crazy. I mean, if I would have ignored that person, I would have missed out on. Yeah. So, did that person, is it, is it the company or they just like have a certain house in mind that you're, that you're responsible? I guess, I, I guess what I'm really asking is like, is real estate kind of like a, um, like a waiter or a waitress, like working in a restaurant, like you've got your tables. Do you have mm-hmm. your houses and like they just like, hey, I wanted that house, so they need to contact you? No. So like are you are you talking about how to get business basically or yeah. how I'm coming? Yeah. So it's just – it's like this is real estate. Somebody goes, here's your license, sell houses. And you go to who? I'm like just sell them. So you have to go, okay, who do I know? Hmm. Who needs a house? Yeah, yeah. And so you actually get no business. So you have to go actively seek business. Get those leads. Yeah. And if you can get a listing, then you can potentially get buyers because they'll call your sign. Mm. But if you can't get a listing, you can't sell. So, I mean, so it's a whole rabbit hole of of fun. I will say I have not – when it's come to, like, me looking for, like, rental property or something like that, I've had the worst experiences, but so I bought this house. I was in the air force. So I bought this house through USA. Great experience. Um, the woman who helped me buy the house, like she handled everything pretty good. So it wasn't bad. Like when people, people will say like house buying is terrible. Like I bought my house super quick and I didn't, I didn't have any troubles at all. But, um, I will say right now, as I was telling you, me and my friend Ryan, we're trying to like find a place to, we want to lease first Mm -hmm. and then I'm actually trying to pay off this house like within the next couple of years or or a few years. And then, um, we want to like buy a studio, like buy and or build a studio. But, um, it's, it's pretty terrible. Like we will, we will call who we calling. Um, it was some, it was some company like down the way from here. And then I think we try to call and cry like, like no answers, like nobody would answer. And I'm just like, we're trying to throw money at these people yeah. and they don't answer the fall. <laughs> yeah. So how, how often are people trying to contact you? Like how often do you get those, those kind of calls where people are like, Hey, I need a house. Like All help me the time. Really? Okay. And I love them. <laughs> and I try to take care of everyone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. I mean, now I've been in the business. I'm going on six years, mm. but like at first, never. Mm. But yeah, no. I mean, it's just it's it's like six degrees of separation. Like you mm. get, you know, you have one person, and then they know people. So now it's just kind of building on itself. But at first, it was it was very difficult. 
So I get, I mean, I, I get people that need, that want to do Airbnbs. I get people that want to flip. I have cash buyers for million dollar properties. You know, it's just everything in between. Yeah. Like I will sell a $10,000 house in Fraser, and mm. I'll sell like a 1.2 million dollar house in East Memphis. So is this, um, so you're saying Fraser in East Memphis, like what's your radius? Uh, pretty much Shelby County, Tipton County. Okay. Anything. I mean, I'll sell anything. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't really have like a, like I have to stay in this area. Mm -mm. No, you no. can sell whatever you want. Okay. And you yeah. are you working for yourself? Are you a company or? So I work under Kaizen. Kaizen. But we're, okay. we're all independent contractors. So you're really your own business. Oh, so it's like okay. how little or how much. Nobody gives you leads. No, but I mean, you just, you go find your own business. Oh, okay. So it's, do you like that? Would you rather it I just love be? It. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like it. it to be successful in real estate, you have to hustle. Right? Yeah. That's if if you can work with a pay scale that's not guaranteed, mm -hmm. then real estate's for you. Mm. So it's like how hard do you want to work? How much do you want to make? It's addicting because you can make as much as you want. Yeah. Nobody's yeah. telling you to stop working. Yeah. So we work like twelve hours a day. Yeah. So uh are you're just making like straight commission? <laughs> mm -hmm. What like what is your is it just like a percentage off of whatever the house sells for? Yeah. So it's 3% of typically, whatever the house of whatever like, it sells for, yeah. Oh, okay. That's pretty wild. Yeah. It's it's insane. Uh, my first year I sold 3.5 million in Memphis homes, which nice. is a lot. And I think last year we sold 12. Okay. I also have though I did I grew a team, so I have three people on my team. And I give them leads. So I have so many leads that I give them to my team. Yeah. Which is great because it's like it's a family. It's, it's our little family. Yeah. So doing this, how, how different do you find doing this as a job than like somebody who is like an investor? You know, those people who just like have money and just like buy houses and flip them and stuff like that. Like how, how different is that from doing this as a real estate agent compared to like – I just like to buy houses and then sell them to people. Mm, yeah. Uh, I tend to find – I hope I don't make anybody mad. Um, <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Let's piss some people off. I mean I, I mean, I invest in real estate as well, but I tend to find like the word investor to me is – it's somebody who's trying to make a profit off other people yeah. essentially. And yeah, not, for sure. Not, <laughs> not always in the best way. No, no. So, yeah, I I don't know. I feel... Investor, scammer, same thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, they're, they're predatory, honestly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I really... I love helping people. It's it's exciting yeah. to, like, be the person that they come to for help and yeah. just to, like, watch their enthusiasm and to help them build wealth. That's, like, it's amazing to yeah. see these people that have rented their whole lives. And then they're like, okay, I want to take the first step. Mm. It's like, I got you. Like, don't worry, I've got you. Like, I got a lender. Like, I've got a title company. You don't have to worry about anything. So how often do people view that as, like, you know, this massive stage in their life? It's like, I just bought this house. Like, oh, people are, like, crying and yeah. like, <laughs> stuff like yeah. that. That's it's crazy. a big deal. Yeah. It is a big deal. Hmm. I, I don't know. When it, we bought the, when me and Rachel bought this house, it was just like, all right, we got a house. I yeah, <laughs> you're like thanks. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean it was like finally, like, it was it was something we always knew we were going to do. So it was just like, all right, got the house. But how good did it feel when you started like watching? You you were paying money yeah. into your own pocket. Yeah, you're like that, yeah, they're taking some for in, uh, interest, but yeah, I'm yeah. also putting some in my own pocket. Yeah, like that, like knowing that. To me, renting is just like throwing your money in a pit. It's like here, here's this money, and it just disappears. Like mm -hmm. it's in a pit. But when you're, I don't even know how. Like some people, I've heard some people like renting just because they don't have to take care of anything, and the landlord takes care of it. And I'm just like, have you tried buying? A <laughs> like, so we did have to replace our um, our hot water heaters right behind there. Like, we had to replace that. But, like, we've been in here for 2000, was it 2019 of August? 
Yeah, I think it was August 2019. So that's when we moved into this house. We had to do that, but like, you know, they say water heaters last for, you know, five, ten years, such so that's something I don't have to worry about for another five to ten years. I don't see why well, we bought that washer and dryer actually when we were renting right before that. So that stuff's brand new. Like you don't have to do a bunch of stuff to, mm-hmm. <laughs> to keep up with the house. Like Mm-mm. just basic things, clean your house. Mm-hmm. Like that's about it. So I, I don't understand people who love to rent. Like I, to me, it's kind of weird. Well, and they're always like, I don't know if I'm going to be here in a year. Like you've been here for seven years. So you're going to be here for yeah. And you can sell. Exactly. Yeah, People think they're going to gonna die in their houses. It's crazy. Like I will walk them through the process and they're like, well, I don't love it. I'm like, well, that's okay. We're going to get you in here. You're going to make 20 to 30K when we sell it in a couple of years. And mm. then you can buy another house. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it works. That's crazy. So when when you're talking to people about like buying the house and whatnot, how how much are you – like just trying to explain to them that difference of like whatever situ like renting or you know l- like if it's a older or younger couple living with their parents or whatever like do you have to explain to them how good of an investment it is to like mm-hmm. really sell them the house um i don't have to but i mean i'm I'm pretty honest. Well, I mean, like, so, to like, get them to in their, stuck in their head, like, this yeah. is a good investment. Buy the house. Well, some people, it's kind of the opposite. They're, they're pre-approved. And they're like, yeah, I got 250000 mm. And I'm like, hey, hey you, don't, you don't need to get two fifty. <laughs> like, I know the bank said you could get two fifty. Let's try two hundred. No, no, no. You don't get it. You, I got two fifty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're like, no, no, no. I'm like, okay, well, you're literally going to stretch yourself thin. Mm. So I'm, I'm trying to, like, steer them back to the middle. Yeah. So a little background, I'm from Colorado, and in 2007, I bought a house with my ex-husband, and we had no idea what was going on. I was 22. Mm. And so we buy this $360,000 house. Uh, I don't know what my payment's going to be until I'm at the closing table. Oh, wow. I don't know my interest rate until I'm at the closing table. So they had predatory lenders back then. So this guy was like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're good, we're good. Mm. I show up to closing and I'm signing and I see this amount and it's like thirty three hundred dollars. I was like, "What's that?" <laughs> and they're like, "Oh, that's your mortgage payment." <laughs> and as I'm signing, I'm like, "I'm gonna get foreclosed on because I can't afford that." Oh snap! I had a twelve percent arm, which is an adjustable rate mortgage, meaning oh, that twelve percent yeah. could go up indefinitely. Uh, the next. Like, I think three months later, the market crashed and I got foreclosed on. So it's my, like, that's, like, cemented in my brain. Yeah. And so I'm really cautious of yeah. people getting in over their heads. So you're – that's, like, your motivation yeah. to do so well mm-hmm. is to just help people yeah. not to do what happened to you. Mm-hmm. Dang. Yeah, that ended my marriage like that. I mean – Jesus. So you used a lot of – I, I, I. Who was on the deed and who was on the the, ty- the like the loan? Uh, for the house I foreclosed yeah. on. Uh, me and my ex. So both of you yeah. were on both? So actually for this house, um, me and Rachel are both on the deed, but I'm just on the loan. Mm. So Smart. Yeah, we did that so that, number one, she didn't have to go through all that processing for the loan and everything. So I was like, yeah, let's just, just put me on the loan that way. Like, we don't have to go through all this bull crap, and it sped up the process. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then also just, like, signing all the paperwork. It made everything a lot easier because for loan, all Jackson, but for the deed is both of us. So Plus, you guys freed up debt to – you buy in power for her Mm. so she can buy because she's not on the loan. Oh, okay. So that was smart on multiple multiple levels. Yeah, we we just were thinking, like – we just want to make this as simple and as like quick as possible because I mean, so we actually got this house pretty simple and, um, we, we saw it and I th- we did a walkthrough and then I think we did a walkthrough at another house. And when we went to the other house, um, and we had, I think we placed an offer for like, ugh, was it? It was two oh five. The house was this house was listed for one ninety seven. And I was talking to our realtor and she was like, You wanna cover the cost of the 
like the closing costs and everything. And I was like, yeah, let's just go 205. And we, they said that we were like the highest bidder. Like, I don't know if it was by like a, like a long shot, but they're like, yeah, you're the highest bidder. So we're like, all right, we got it. So they're like, but the people say that, um, they don't think the house is going to cost 205. They don't think it's going to appraise, appraise for, two, for 205. Yeah. yeah. So they're like, drop it. What do you want to drop it to? And I was like, and my realtor's asking me, she's like, what do you want to drop it to? I was like, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> so, so I was like, 200 even. I was like, sure. So we drop it to 200 even, and they're cool with that. Everything goes through, and uh, the house gets appraised. For two oh five. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. yeah so, but they don't know that though, right? Exactly. You they didn't that know from them. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Yeah. So that was cool. I was like, all right, cool. Five grand in yeah. equity already. In equity. Bet. See, like that's what I love. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that that really worked out in our favor. Just I, now, you know, in hindsight, I wish I dropped it to like one ninety. You know, <laughs> but. Hey, it, it worked however we did it. But um yeah, I mean I think it's I think it's kind of just weird that so many people I don't know, they stress about the house buying situation, which I've always been good with finances. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I've I I think I got my first credit card when I was in the military and um, you know, I just every time I used it I paid it off. I never bought anything crazy with it. And I always had like a, a decent credit score, so when it, when it came to buying a house, I thought, I was like, yeah, everything's going to be fine. But not everybody's like that. <laughs> no, I'm not like that. <laughs> I did not clean up my act until I got into real estate. Dang, that's yeah, wild. I had like a 530, I remember, because I, mm. I know the lenders. And I'm like, will you just pull my credit? And he pulls it and he was like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Can you fix it, please? That's wild. So, yeah, we're back up. I have exceptional credit now. Nice. But it took six years. Nice. But, yeah, that's what I like. I like helping people. I like watching them fix their credit. I don't know. It's just it's rewarding. So um, after the house gets foreclosed, how does that damage – how bad does that damage, like, your credit and everything? Oh, Jesus. It, bad. I, I don't know yeah. anybody who's oh, ever got their house foreclosed. No, so I don't, it was I don't know. really bad. Yeah, it was bad. I think. I mean, it was seven years. Like we filed for bankruptcy. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just destroyed my marriage. Yeah. I actually moved out of Colorado. It is insanely overpriced. Was it Denver? Yeah. It was Denver. Yeah. See, I um, so there was a um, a program that I went to to learn my job that I do. I do automation at. Owens Corning and one of the companies that was coming to hire was Smuckers and they were in they weren't in Denver it was a city close to Denver I'm not sure what it was but um so they were like some people live in Denver you can if you wanted to but um I was looking at like the houses that were in that area and I was like gee nice stuff just a yeah. little out of my range of what I yeah. really wanted to buy and I was like geez but that's when also got an off not yeah also got an offer in um what was it Compton so a lot of they said a lot of people lived like two hours away from the plant the plant was in Compton but I mean you could live in L A you could live wherever you want to but they said some people were living like two hours away and I'm like I'm not driving not, two hours mm-hmm. to work to have a cheaper house yeah. I bumped that so that's why I moved to Memphis I there. I chose the plant here and I was like, my money's going to go a lot longer and I can live in like a more rural area and then just drive to work. It takes me 30 minutes to get to our plant. It's, um, you know, where Smith is like Smith Avenue or something like that. Mm. Um, if you're going down, I think it's 40, um, gosh, I'm terrible with streets. Rachel makes fun of me about this all the time. Cause like, I know what I'm looking at. I can see stuff. I have no idea, like, the name of the street. But if I ha- have a picture, I know where I am. So, but anyways, it's it takes 30 minutes for me to get, like, to my workplace. But I was like, yeah, that's it's going to be way more affordable for me to just buy a house, like, here, you know, Cordova or something like that, and just drive into Memphis. But uh, we were actually renting, um, what road is this? Far Drive. 
yeah, far drive that's right down here. There's like a school right down here. And it was, God, we were with Rent Progress, and it was like 1700 a month or something like that. Yeah, I say my mortgage what? right. Yeah, <laughs> my mortgage right now is like a thousand. Yeah, with the escrow and everything. Yeah, that's taxes, insurance, that's everything. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> seventeen hundred. So wait, where did you? So you're new to Memphis? Yeah, I I from, got here in April of 2019. From I'm from Oneonta, Alabama. It's like okay, hour north of Birmingham. Okay, so still southern. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a culture shock when I moved here six oh, years ago. Had you, had you ever been to the South? No. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not really. I, I've been a couple of times, but not like this. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I moved here and immediately wanted to move back. But why? Um, mm, like the what? crime. I think, like, the it was. Crime? Yeah, the crime. Oh, you're just in the wrong spot. Well, yes. You're in Memphis. No, no, no. no. <laughs> so I moved here and I found a house and I was like, wow, this house is so pretty. And it's mm. only $900 a month. Like, that's insane. <laughs> uh, it's because it was in a not so great air part of town. It was, it was yeah. like right there off Jackson yeah. in Valentine. Yeah. Um, which is, it's just Cockroaches fine. Cockroaches living next it's door. It's fine Drug now. <laughs> but, but when I moved here, it was like a really scary experience. So I, I, after a year and a half, I moved. And, yeah, I, I love it here. What's the cost of, like, all the apartments that are, like, downtown? So, you know, like, the – what is it? So, like, where the pyramid is, mm -hmm. and then if you're, like, going away from the pyramid, <clears throat> like, so there's, like, pyramid and then the bridge, and you're, like, going this way toward mm – -hmm. uh, I don't know. Like French Street? I guess like that that riverside. Yeah, riverside. And, yeah, so if you're going toward that way, there's like those apartments that like overlook the water and everything. Are those like extremely expensive? Uh, there is like a big white building. Maybe. They're no, they're like 170, maybe to 220. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. oh, For okay. a con it's a condo. Oh, they're just like condos? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. See, I thought those were just like apartments that people... We might be talking about a different building. But yeah, there's... I think they're mostly condos downtown. Oh, really? For sale, yeah. Oh, okay. See, I I know I they're know. building some. I would have figured they'd just mm -hmm. be like super expensive just because the location. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I was like... We might be talking about different buildings. Yeah, I'm just talking about like... um, the, You know, like where the fire station is? Yes. It's like the other side of, you know, the fire station's facing the street this way. And so, like, the other side of that is still on that hill. So, it's overlooking, like, the water. It They're looks kind of really like condos. They're really expensive. They, like, look really nice. No, they look pretty good. I mean, they don't look like, you know, something crazy. but <laughs> With your good. picture directions and my inability to, like, know east and west, <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're yeah. talking about two different things. I guess but. just whatever, whatever... Um, <laughs> It's facing the water. Yeah, it's yeah, whatever is just facing the water. So, to me, I would think those would be expensive just because, like, that seems like prime location. I I don't know what people consider prime location in Memphis because I'm still learning the area. Yeah, it's different for yeah. sure. I don't, I don't go like I'm still. I don't even know what Midtown is. People have described it to me on I this love podcast. Midtown. Yeah, people I love described Midtown. it to me like a thousand times, and I still don't understand it. I was watching some video on YouTube today, and some chick was talking about um, going to Midtown. I was like, sure, wherever that is. <laughs> <laughs> My peeps are in Midtown. So is is there like certain spots that it goes like rough area, rough area, su super nice, and then back to rough area? Mm -hmm. That's why I figured it was. It's so bizarre. Yeah. It's like literally street by street. And it, I don't know, like one street's fine. Yeah. Or one end of the street's okay. Property value's fine. And then you head east or west and it changes. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> it's like by block. That's crazy. Which would make you nervous buying a house because yeah. you're like, okay, well, I'm on Nelson, but in three years, is Nelson going to be like the other part of Nelson? Like you, you have to kind of watch it more. Here. Yeah. So are you, are you really trying to sell the cheaper stuff or the more expensive stuff? Because like you could go for quantity and just sell a ton of crap, or you could go for quality and just sell those nice expensive houses. I would say my people 
like land, you know, the people that I kind of am close with, you, you, like yeah. like the people I know, my, yeah, yeah. like my jujitsu people. That's mm. who I sell to the most. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you've done jujitsu with me, I've probably sold you a house. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, I'd say like 250 th- to 350 okay. is pretty normal. Hmm. And But the, I mean, in Memphis, that's all you need. Yeah. And uh, where, where in Memphis are we talking? Mm, like Midtown, East Memphis. Midtown, Those are my yeah. favorite areas okay. to sell. Uh, all that being said, I live in a 900 square foot condo. It is so tiny. Yeah. I sell all these beautiful houses. And the significant other, like he goes, we're going to buy a house. We're going to get a bigger house. Promise. And then we just buy another investment property. So what's the... What's the reasoning behind it? You waiting? Like waiting for that to pull the trigger on the right thing? Yeah. Yeah. No. I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's just, I guess it's just like the logic of do we upgrade or do yeah. we buy a property that makes us money? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to me, there's there's really no rush to getting like the right thing. Like even with this house – always wanted to build my own house and now I'm thinking about it. I love saving money. I love, I love spending money. Love it. Also love saving money. (laughs) So I was like, ah, be awesome to just like build my own perfect house and like buy a bunch of land and build a nice huge house on it. And at the same time, I'm like, or I could just get a house that's already built. Just buy it. I'm good. Yeah, I'm done. No, that's that's the smart move. <laughs> Building is so stressful. Yeah. And it, they all turn out the same. They're just houses. <laughs> they all look the same. They're like, I can customize all this stuff. It's a headache and you don't you can already do, do it. Like yeah. you were talking to your the people that you were talking to. Like you can just add on to a house that's already mm-hmm. built. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I I was just thinking about that recently because I was thinking about, you know, what we want to do after this house. And we're probably going to end up um, just either keeping it and just like renting it out mm-hmm. or just, you know, sell it. And that will be money that we can put toward the new house. Mm-hmm. But um, it's it's a struggle in my head, you know. It's a big like, OK, I'm going to go on my little. I love watching people build wealth. <laughs> like, it's awesome. You know, you get this house, pay it off. Put a tenant in it yeah. and then save up the funds for the new house and just like build snowball yeah. or sell this, take the equity and then buy two smaller properties, which will get you a better return. Mm. That's what you got to watch for. Yeah. And we, we've also thought about just like, yeah, we could just sell this house now because we looked on how how accurate is Zillow? Ew. Like the Zestimate, you know what I'm talking about? It's fairly accurate. With the exception of, like, if a for sale by owner comes mm-hmm. and they, because they don't know how to ascertain value, so they're mm-hmm. like, well, this house sold for three fifty. I'm going to list for three fifty. Uh, prices are based on square footage and price mm-hmm. per square foot. So if you just guess, uh, you look at what your neighbor sold their house for and you guess, yeah, that's that's not right. But if if you're a, <laughs> a for sale by Stop owner, it. just don't do that. <laughs> goes and lists a house. In your neighborhood, mm. they will change that zestimate so they'll skew it so badly that it's inaccurate. Oh, yeah. So it's it's not based on what's sold, but what's actively listed. So for sale by owners, will jack up the zestimate often, but it's pretty. I mean, it's pretty accurate. Wow, that's crazy. Well, so for us, what is this? I think this house was at like. 230 something last time I checked. And mm-hmm. I said we bought it for 200 even. Like, like two years ago? Yeah. Yeah, so it's crazy. It says it's gone up 30 grand. So mm-hmm. I was like, we might sell this thing now. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, if we sell it now, that'll be money that we could just put toward another house. And mm-hmm. As you said, we, I mean, it's or just. Or get rental property. I mean, it's yeah. amazing. And those are tax shelters. Sorry. True. I'll no, talk real estate to you all no, day long. That's, that's what I want. Like I want to, you know, think about that kind of stuff because, mm-hmm. as I said, I love I love blowing money, but I mm-hmm. also love saving it. It's amazing. <laughs> when you have to like you have to save it, and then you have to make it make you money. So either yeah. in the stock market or a CD, yeah, or the housing market, yeah. And I, I know some people who do. Um, they've been buying houses and trying to rent them out and stuff like that, and I'm just like. That's crazy. I got a friend, um, Jeremy. He's in uh, Savannah, Georgia. 
from Wisconsin, lives in Savannah, bought a house in Wisconsin, and is using it as a rental property. I'm like, dude, the it's balls much. on you <laughs> to do that. Because I think his, I think his, uh, his wife is from Wisconsin as well. So I, I guess they just wanted to, you know, have some property back up there. But I'm just like, dude, that but sounds like a job. If you really want a job, buy a property and Airbnb it. <laughs> <laughs> So how, I can't tell how stressful you. Is that? <laughs> oh my God, it's so stressful. Really great return, but it's very mm. active. Um, you can make. I mean, you can pretty much double your rent. Well, which one's better, the Airbnb or the the renting? Well, there's two. I mean, there are two different strategies. So, like a long term rental, you're going to get less of a return. So you know, you put in two hundred thousand, and you're getting fifteen hundred dollars rent. Mm-hmm. That your your return is smaller than if you put in two hundred thousand in your Airbnb for like thirty five hundred, right? So how is that? I, I don't yeah, even so know how Airbnb Air, works. It's, <laughs> night, it's nightly rentals, so people okay. are renting per night, and there's a cleaning fee. Oh, but okay. it's very active. So long term rentals are passive, and then Airbnbs are active. So people are using Airbnb like for long periods of time. Uh, they are, but most of them are just doing nightly. Okay. They're traveling, and they have a dog, and yeah. they need a place that's pet friendly. Oh, okay. So we Airbnb. We have six, six Airbnbs. Five. Oh, wow. We sold a couple um, when the pandemic hit. Yeah. Because nobody was traveling. Yeah, yeah. So, but no, those are <laughs> those are so much fun. <laughs> like I've cleaned. Crap! Like people have like shit in the bed. Is is that worth it like, to you? <laughs> I mean, not, not the not <laughs> not. The, <laughs> is that not, worth it? No, not like that. I meant like uh, instead of just hiring a company okay. to clean it for you. We we hire it out now because we're too busy. But yeah. in the beginning, we were you know we were hustling and doing yeah, this yeah. all on our own. We were flipping on our own. We were doing Airbnbs on our own. Um, now we hire it, but so, you know it's employees and sometimes they can't show up mm. and then the COVID thing hit nobody's yeah. comfortable cleaning so we have to step in and clean <laughs> you're not comfortable <laughs> with COVID doing a cleaning company <laughs> it's, the irony of that yeah <laughs> you're cleaning <laughs> it's, it's a lot of work it's all, always interesting though yeah always interesting people so, were throwing parties when the bar shut down so like uh, that was a big thing doing those house parties because mm-hmm. you ain't got no bar yeah that's and they're wild. like, it's just me and my sister. You're like, are you sure? Because we're going to be by there. How many sisters? You <laughs> uh, yeah. And if there's 30 of you in our house, we're going to call the cops. Oh, Dang. no, I swear. And every every single night. For, these, like, ab- for about people? like two months. Yeah. Really young people? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. See, with Airbnb, that probably changed the game for – for like young people, is there a limit on how old you can be? Eighteen. Yeah, that changed yeah. the game for college students. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh yeah. There's like there's words if anybody's listening that will guarantee that we don't accept your booking. Like mm. staycations. I mean, that means you want to throw a party. Oh. Yeah. Uh, any type of get together, like they don't want to trash their house, so they'll yeah. just rent your house. Yeah. But some people are really nice. <laughs> I'm I'm sure there's some people who like can accomplish being a good like renter or something like that, and then there's people who just like it just is in it's not in them. It's like mm-hmm. it's not in them to be, I guess, a good person. <laughs> no, I know you have the same thing with long term rentals. You know, you have tenants that. Your roof will be leaking. That That's my phone. Oh, I'm sorry. I, was like, I turned it <laughs> off, but it, I was it like, never the sound stopped. Vibrate, I don't know. <laughs> it's just constantly, it's it's just constantly, constantly goes vibrating. On. I'm so sorry. No, you're fine. No, you have uh, long term tenants that will trash your place too. Like they're like, oh yeah, uh, I forgot to tell you the roof's been leaking for six months. So why do why wouldn't they bring that up? You're renting. That's I don't know. That's your job is People to tell them. <laughs> You'd think they'd want it fixed. That's crazy. I've seen houses without floors. I've seen I've seen crazy stuff. And people live like this. Wow. It's 
if you're renting the house, you're renting because you don't want to take care of mm-hmm. it. Why would you not tell the people know. who own the house? <laughs> I don't know. I've seen it so many times. That's like one wild. lady's bathtub had fallen. It had fallen into the crawl space. Mm-hmm. And when I went to sell the house, the owner was like, yeah, the tenant never told me the tub fell into the crawl space. I was like, well, how did they shower? Oh, my God. And I guess she got like in the tub in the crawl space and still showered. <laughs> People I don't know. are stupid. Oh my god! People are interesting for sure. <laughs> <laughs> stupid. No, no, stupid. <laughs> different word for interesting. So, how often do you have to like attend to like somebody? I guess not doing what they were supposed to be doing. Like you, if you have somebody who's like a renter and they're just like constantly like calling you like do you have those types of people Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. yeah so it swings both ways yeah i mean it's does that make it hard where you're like is this worth it like am i really doing this where i just have to like help these people out i have to be a parent to these grown people Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah no um definitely wouldn't recommend it for everyone but yeah i think one's manageable but Mm. then two three you definitely want to go seek a property management company to Mm. handle all those headaches. Because if you have a property management company, they handle all of that for you. Yeah. So So are you talking about like outsourcing, like a whole different? Yeah. So they'll like vet the tenant, put them in there, take care of all the complaints, and then just give you your money. Oh, They take a percentage. That's crazy. It's 10%. That's that's crazy. That's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Mm -hmm. That's wild. Um, How many do you have now? What, houses? Yeah. Like rental property? Or is it, do you have Airbnb and rental property? Four, five. I think we only have five. We only have five. How, yeah, they're basically the same thing. Okay, gotcha, mm-hmm. gotcha. We don't do any long term. Oh, okay. So for us, we like knowing that they're only going to be there for 24 hours or 48 hours. You like that? I like that, yeah. Because oh, okay. we've like gone in and flipped these houses and there's really nice things in there. Mm. There's brand new stoves and countertops and floors. Oh. So you can't do a lot of damage. Gotcha. In two nights. You can do some, but yeah. not a lot. So how are you f- trying to figure out how much to put into these houses? Like you're saying, you put these nice stuff in it. Are you like, all right, we can put in 50 grand worth of stuff, but anything more than that doesn't even seem worth it? Yeah. Oh, no. That's that's always the struggle. Yeah. So the fiance wants to like – deck them out Mm. and I'm like hey they're just like they're gonna trash that (laughs) so it's a balance we work out well together because he wants to go overboard and I want to give them like like one towel Uh, so it's a good balance so he's probably trying to make it like nice you know what I mean like an experience yeah okay yeah it it's just I'm really good at sales and jujitsu and I'm really friendly but like you know, business sense. I, I don't care to to run the day to day operations, but he mm. loves that, so it works out really well. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. yeah, I would. You know, I would. That's how I am, even with this house. Like, we have probably eight towels between me and Rachel. That's it. I want to buy more nicer towels. I'm just like, what? What if something gets spilled? And then we have guests over. Yeah. We need all these more towels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm like, well, you're fine. You don't even use all those towels. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I like to have nice things in the house just because I'm just like, I'm at, I'm at home. Like, this is where you're supposed to be the most comfortable. This mm-hmm. is where you're supposed to feel, you know, I, I don't have a, a castle. So this is my castle. You know, this is where I want to feel like I'm treating myself to the greatest of, of things. So that's. I can definitely understand from his point of view. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I definitely be with him. He's the, he's the, he's really good at business, mm. which is great because I'm really bad at business <laughs> and would run up all that credit card debt if I could. Uh, yeah, so he makes all the rules, and I like I like following rules, so it works out very well. Got you. Okay. So when when you decide to sell a property and you realize like, hey, this isn't this isn't what um, I expected to get out of this, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and sell it. How much of that are you willing to take as a loss to feel like, okay, I know I'm taking a loss on here, but whatever, like I, I don't need it. 
Like, do, so do we have that cushion? Because that hasn't yeah. happened yet, just because okay. the market's so crazy. Oh, so you're so, just like, yeah, anything's like, going to be a positive any, for Anything, you. yeah. So oh, wow. Kind of crazy. We bought a house in October of 2019 to Airbnb. Pandemic hit. And so we decided to sell in June. Okay. And we did nothing to the property. And we made like 20K. Just, just from capital gains. Nice. So, yeah. So, since the pandemic, prices have gone up 30% because wow. nobody wants to sell their home. And we Dang. have so many buyers because the interest rate's so low. That's crazy. So, the takeaway is if you wanted to sell your house, <laughs> you should do <laughs> it right now. Dang. Yeah. No, it's a great time. Like, there's literally, there's 50-year inventory lows. Mm. So... Man, I'm just think I'm like trying to process uh-huh. all that because that's that's a weird situation because like you know it's a they they call that a buyer's market right when there's a bunch more people buying than selling that's sellers market that's sellers market so sellers can do, oh the seller can yeah. sell to whoever yeah whomever okay. yeah got you they don't even have to fix anything so the, in the sellers market golly that's a weird situation because if you really want to like move. You're like, oh, now's the perfect time. I can sell. Mm-hmm. But then, but then, where are you going to buy? Yeah, what are you going to buy? Dang. Yep. That's rough. It's, it's so rough. <laughs> and you know how you went over and your agent said it might not appraise? Yeah. Like, we're going over 15, 20K and we're still losing. Like, over list. Jesus. Yeah, so it's gotten, it's bananas. Man. So, how often. Do you, I guess, like, have the the situation where you get, like, a new person and you're, like, working with somebody else? So you, you know, you have a person, you close on a house, and then you're moving on to the next person. Like, what is that, like, that time frame of that transition, like, on to the next person? Is it just immediately, like, all right, cool, sold your house. Now I got this other person to deal with. Uh, I try... Or you do multiple people at the same yeah, time. Yeah, you got to do multiple. That's multiple so, yeah, okay. to survive. So it's really, you make a lot of money yeah. in real estate, but it costs a lot of money. Mm. So I think our, like we advertise on Zillow. Okay. And it's 6K a month. Just to advertise just on Just to advertise on Zillow, yeah. So Zillow isn't, Zillow is just like a, like an Amazon for houses. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. they're not actually selling anything. It's just other people's yes. putting their stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, so Zillow's killing it. Yeah, for real. <laughs> They're making so much money. That's a genius. Whoever thought of that mm-hmm. was genius. Mm-hmm. I wish I could buy stocks in Zillow. <laughs> I actually did. Um, Do they have stocks? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> it's, no, it's crazy. And I'm like, oh, I buy a stock. I, I just bought $50 because I, I started advertising mm-hmm. like a couple years ago. And I was like, I'm just going to see like what it does. Yeah. And my $50 share is like now worth 200 which is oh, crazy. Wow. Yeah, I didn't know they had stuff. Yeah, no, they have stuff. I'm going to buy that. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. But no, you have to juggle multiple people. Like, uh, I think we were doing a house a week. Okay. We're closing on a house a week. So it's about like, maybe six six people um, at various stages in the process. Oh, okay. So close, actually closing mm-hmm. one house a week. So you could be working <clears throat> with a ton of people, mm-hmm. way more than that. Oh yeah, it's a numbers game. Man, how often does that drop? Like fall through? Oh, a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a lot. Yeah. So you, you're not usually dragging people on, or you know, you're not dragging them. They're dragging you on. Mm-hmm. So, how often does that happen? Where it's just like, you know, ah, I've been working. This person's been trying to buy a house no, for a year okay. now. No, that's okay. That's okay. Like, that's part of it. That's <laughs> yeah. part of it. It's, some people get really weirded out. They're like, I'm so sorry. I'm uh, not ready. I'm like, no, no, it's fine. I've been working with some people for years. Dang. Yeah. So. Well, like, what kind of person, <laughs> uh, well, like, what are they looking for? Um, Usually it's somebody. They've got to be picky. Somebody that's particular or gets cold feet i mean that's part of it too mm-hmm. you know, like writing your offers scary and people back out you can back out it's allowed yeah yeah it, it's okay i'm one guy's backed out of like three houses and i still love him oh my god <laughs> we're gonna find him the one why does he back out 
I think ultimately it's cold feet. For what? You're you're in it to buy the house. I don't know. <laughs> I just want to see where it goes. He's just afraid that it's not the right house. I think, yeah. Why are you getting into it? I don't know. Just don't and, look at the house. And I like every time he's like, "You don't have to work with me anymore." I'm like, "No, it's okay. I just we're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna do this." That's crazy. Yeah, it's kind of like I put. Was that sunk cost fallacy where I put so much time in it that yeah. I'm like, I'll just sing more time. Dang. Mm-hmm. That's that's crazy to me. Like, I, I think we probably looked at 10 or less houses before we bought this oh, house. Oh, I love you. It, <laughs> People like that. For every one that takes three years, there's somebody like you. That's crazy. I know we looked at, uh, let's see, we looked at one house there. I think we might have looked at all houses were in Cordova for sure. Um, so when we actually moved here, we looked at Google Maps. And so Rachel was a personal trainer at Lifetime Fitness in Collierville. And, you know, I work at in Memphis. So we were trying to see where we could live that would be, like, the best place for both of us to travel in, like, those directions. So... It took her like 15 minutes to get to work and took me 30 minutes. And I was like, sure, um, the houses are good prices for the area. And we got a freaking Kroger right there. So I'm like, all right, cool. We're good. And uh, so now she is, she quit her job there and does her own thing in personal training. So I was like, all right, I'm still happy with where we are. Like, even if, you know, we're only here because now I'm, you know, I'm just driving. 30 minutes to, to Memphis. I'm like, I'm still happy with where we are though. So it's, I don't know. Like it, it wasn't that big of a deal for me to like, just pick a house. Like, <laughs> like I find, feel you. find a spot that you're comfortable with driving the distance mm-hmm. and you know, you've got certain resources close to you. And as I said, like the Kroger and you know, there's other, other restaurants and stores right here. Um, but yeah, just find something that's close. It's and emotional, I think. You think so? Yeah, people get really emotional about it. Just all mental game. Yeah, that's it's stressful. Not, <laughs> not for you. <laughs> no, I mean also like was I'm it a, your first? Yeah, this first house I bought. Oh. I, I'm a decision maker. I'm a business guy, mm-hmm. so I'm just like I run numbers, and then I make a decision. It's Randy. Yeah, that's yeah. I, that's how I am. Because if if it makes sense logically and numerically, then why? Like, I have to talk myself out of it. Like to me, almost everything is a good idea. So I have to talk myself like, why wouldn't you do this? So then I just like go through the steps of, oh, this would be dumb because blank. So that's that's more or less how I look at it. So when I was looking at this house and I was like, all right, Rachel's driving 15 minutes, I'm driving 30. We've got a if we ever need something randomly, you know, brownies and ice cream in the middle of the night, we can go to Kroger like it makes sense to live in this house. And I don't know. I guess that's just not so simple for other people. No, it's not. <laughs> it's but even like, so not. if you're an older couple with kids or something like that, then you're probably thinking like school districts mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So that's mm-hmm. understandable. And everybody has their thing. Yeah. Like some people obsess over the trees. Mm. Like the tr- like this one lady is like, trees are going to fall on my house. Like I'm going to get a house. I cannot have trees. Oh, she's thinking so, not having yeah. trees. So we, we oh, found wow. a house with no trees. Some people are wow. really, yeah, there's like a thing. Everybody has a thing yeah, yeah. that they want. I think mine was just really the location. Like, I didn't really have anything specific. I mean, obviously, like, you know, I wanted to have something for, you know, the studio. And um, I like open spaces, too. Like, yes. my dream house is, like, a, a huge kitchen that's open to the living room. Like, and also, I love one-story houses. Mm-hmm. Like, I say I like tall ceilings. I still don't know if I really like tall ceilings, but I love one-story houses that just, like, cover a lot of land that are just, like, a, like a big floor plan but still just one story because it just makes the house look bigger. Like, if I can get lost in my own house or, you know, people are like, where am I at, you know, if somebody's brand new to the house, I think that's kind of cool because it, it's it spaces everything out. Because, mm-hmm. like, with this house, it feels small just because, like, if you're in the living room, 
And then somebody's like up here and then somebody's right there. It's not so very it's, open. Yeah. Just, like it actually is like a weird yeah. layout. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I'm more of a one story. Like I got one player. stories. <laughs> do you right see? Now. Do you oh see? Oh my god! No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. So, what, what's your dream place? I'm really weird. I actually like small spaces. You so yeah. You like where you're so at. So right I am now. complaining that there, I'm in 900 square feet, and I would like it to be maybe 1500. Yeah. But I grew up in townhomes and condos. That's all they had in Colorado. Mm. It's very urban, and uh, he grew up in a condo. Okay. So we both like that small space. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think, I mean, we are going to get a new place, but it wouldn't be bigger than 1500 mm. And I'm into that minimalist lifestyle. Really? Yes. Okay. So we kind of like a couple years ago got rid of all of our stuff, and we have a tendency to get more stuff because we're Americans and we consume and yeah, shop. And absolutely. so it's a constant like – do I need an Instapot? <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. You know, I can I can live without an Instapot. Yeah. So it's just kind of taking every item and putting it through that filter of do mm. I I don't have a lot of space. So do I need this? Hmm. So how do you when you when you get to a certain point mm -hmm. and you you realize like hey, I'm good at this. How do you progress? Like, how do you how do you get better at it? Is it just talking to people? Are you talking about Learn real, are you talking about real estate? Yeah, like do you do you just get better at negotiating, or is it more or less oh. the market, or is it knowing the houses? Like, I think it's better? confidence. Oh, my phone's doing that thing again. I'm sorry, <laughs> I think it's confidence. Popular person. What, uh, if, what if it was the deal you did earlier? They canceled. Oh, <laughs> No, that happens. Oh, no. yeah! You're like, I'm gonna, I'm about to get paid, and then they oh, call and they're no. like, Hey, guess what? You're not getting paid. And you're like, Oh, okay, it's oh, okay. Oh my god! I drink a lot of wine. <laughs> I have a really stressful job. My hair falls out. Oh, I break god. out in hives. No, negotiating's big. It's reading people. Yeah. Uh, I read lots of books on it. Um, empathizing, like de-escalating situations. Mm -hmm. So. I, there's a right and a wrong way and it's really I'm communicating with another agent mm. my clients needs and wants so it's it's communicating well that's like the the key okay so I have to hear what they're saying and they're saying I'm not buying this house if they don't do this this and this I'm walking away and I have to go to the list agent and be like they love the house um really their their one concern is the hot water heater I know that your seller said they wouldn't replace it, but like, is there any way to make this work? That's how can that we make petty. this work? That sounds super petty. It's emotional. That's crazy. <laughs> like, so when we moved into this house, they told them to fix, um, what was it? Oh, like the fan in the bathroom. They told them to fix that. They didn't. They told them to fix the fence. They fixed it. They just okay, basically yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Put You've it had together. that experience, yeah. I, but I was like, dude, I'm buying a two hundred thousand dollar house. I'm not about to get petty over one two thousand dollar fixes. Like mm -hmm. I can just fix it myself. It's gonna be my house, whatever. Like and I'm probably gonna do a better job than whatever they were gonna do anyway. So I'm gonna I would have to once they fix it and you know they're already prolonging me getting into this house. So I'm just gonna refix it anyways, probably. So whatever. So yeah, I was not like nitpicking at any of that stuff. I was like, uh, yeah, 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 screw it, whatever. We'll take the house. Like you are the me. exception, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not how it normally plays out. That's crazy. It's very like lots of tears, lots of tears. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even like uh, people who are who are nitpicky. To me, I feel like you're you're not looking at the big picture. You know what I mean? Like, even though this is your house, it's still, like, investment. So, give it give it two, five, ten years. You might not even have any kind of emotional attachment to this place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they're, they're thinking, like, you know, Yeah, right it's now. just that, emo like, they're just emotionally hung up on... Yeah. On feeling like something's not fair. Yeah. And they're going to hyper-focus on one thing, whatever that is, which is okay. Yeah. I, I think that's why I like my job. 
I get mm. to like conflict management. Okay. So I just get to help. Nice. Because they're saying like, I'm not going to buy, but I know that deep down they want to buy. It's the best thing for them. Mm. And like, we're going to come to a conclusion. Uh, yeah. Every problem has a solution. So what would your advice be for somebody who's a first time buyer? And then two part question. What call would me. your advice be? <laughs> <laughs> so after they call you, okay, thank you. <laughs> what, are, what are we doing? So I'm I'm first time buyer, Amanda. I need a house. Um, I make three hundred grand a year, and I'm I'm oh, trying to wow. Yeah, I make three hundred grand a year, loaded. but I'm trying to buy a two million dollar crib. Oh, so. <laughs> nice! I love so, this conversation. So what what do you got for me? Um, well, let's. Let's be more realistic and say you're 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 making fifty k and you want to buy <laughs> you want to buy two hundred k because I don't even know how to answer that. Oh no! no. Uh, right. The first thing you want to do is talk to a lender. People are terrified to get their credit pulled because mm. it's going to knock their score down. It it knocks it down by three points, and it recovers within thirty to forty five days. It's okay. a it's a <clears throat> hard hit. It doesn't affect your credit. If you're worried about the three points, like it's it's not a big deal. So you just go to a lender, they'll pull your financial situation and tell you what you need to do to fix it. Um, sometimes it helps to get your credit score up because you get a lower interest rate, and they'll tell you what you can afford, and then we can give you an estimated payment. So I would say, are you comfortable paying fifteen hundred dollars a month with a mortgage? Yes, awesome. Let's go look at two fifty. Like we're in the two fifty price range. So then we go look at houses, and you find the one that you love, and we put a contract on it, and then you are not locked in at that point. You have that seven-day inspection period. You get to inspect the house, and you can walk away at any time. You can find a crack in the driveway and, and terminate. Get your earnest money back. You're good. That sounds like a, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a plan. All right, so what about somebody who – Amanda – I make 50 grand a year. I'm trying to buy $200,000 house. This is my fourth house. Mm. I've had three divorces. Mm. Amanda, can you help me out? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so how how often do you have those people where it's like you see them where it's like, oh, you've been through this whole, a few times. Mm -hmm. Do you just get nervous? You're like, I don't know how this is going to go. I think, no, I like experienced people. Yeah? Yeah. Because they know. Well, they, that's not always a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably sketchy. <clears throat> no, I, I, like I said downstairs before we started this, like I never judge anybody. Yeah. Because I don't know. I mean, don't know. Yeah. People can have a lot of money and yeah, yeah. and hide it. Yeah. So I, I never judge anybody. It some some guy can walk up to me and say I want a 1.5 million dollar house. So I'm going to go, "Okay. Like I'm going to help you." Yeah. Eventually we're going to get you. I'm going to get some proof of oh, Yeah, you'll find so, out. Like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to find out. <laughs> like I'll show you one house for yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, so people they surprise me. Mm. Well, if there is a ultimate I guess, house buying um, advice that you have for people. What, what would you say other than calling you? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm shameless. I'll stop. Uh, mm. I guess a lot of people, a lot of people don't understand how it works. Mm -hmm. um, I, w I would I'd strongly suggest that people don't go get pre-qualified for 300000 That's top of budget and go buy a $300,000 house. Mm. That's, I don't want to, I don't want to sell the foreclosure <laughs> from the bank. Yeah. Like that's a real, that's a real thing. I think people do it often. So you kind of need to see like what you can comfortably afford and then maybe go a little bit lower. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> sounds like good advice. <laughs> well, it's been great having you Thank on, Amanda. Thank you. Uh, answer a lot of questions about your jujitsu and then also real estate. I'm sure it helps somebody out. Somebody's watching. They I know hope so. they learned something today. Um, sales pitch. What you got? Tell everybody how they can contact you. Um, if they want a house, 
give them your whatever info. Okay. Uh, yeah. If I, my phone number. Whatever you want people to know. <laughs> yes, please text me. Text me house questions. Uh, you can reach me at 901-308-9436 or I'm heavy on Facebook and Instagram, Amanda Kirkman. And if anybody wants to try jiu-jitsu, like those are the two things I sell, jiu-jitsu and houses. So hit me up if it's your first time and you want somebody to walk you through a class. Like that's that's my forte as well. So Awesome. All right. That was Amanda Kirkman. Uh, Thank you for everybody tuning in. See you next time.